And good morning. Welcome to Interesting to See You, Daily Sports Podcast, News, Narrative, Stakes, Gambling. Hello. I'm Nick. Uh, yeah, my camera's not focusing today, and I could could absolutely fix it, but I don't want to. Um, when I say I could, I mean I could I could investigate it. I could investigate what's going on, but I'm not going to. Uh, because that just uh, there's a lot of moving parts, and it just uh, it seems hard. <laughs> so instead of that, here I am, blurry. Good, it'll hide my mustache from you people. You can watch on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, you can listen, etc., etc. We start today with Derek Carr. Derek Carr began the unwinding of the quarterback market that's going to include Derek Carr, Jimmy Garoppolo, Geno Smith, perhaps Aaron Rodgers, perhaps Ryan Tannehill, perhaps some other people. But yesterday, before we get to Derek Carr, our friend, the Rich Eisen Show, Rich Eisen himself, that camera whore, said, quote, Tom Brady might be done, might not be done after all. God damn it. God damn it. Please. It's getting Brett Farvey. Uh, uh, Miami, I guess. Who cares? Just get the fuck out of here, bro. Just get out. Graduate. Graduate. Go to college. Derek Carr signs with the Saints for a billion dollars yesterday. Just joking. It wasn't a billion dollars. It ended up being allegedly like three years, 150. But it's. It, it, I think it's going to end up being closer to like 40 million a year guaranteed for two years. They can get out after a year and a half or after two years. Three years, essentially, for the Saints. The conversation online is, are the Saints trying to win a Super Bowl? No. Are they trying not to suck? Yes. They just continually compete, 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 even though they're not that good. They have a bunch of players who t- who are on the back half of their career, but they're all really good. So my opinion is that the their coach just isn't that good, Dennis Allen. Sean Payton was excellent. Dennis Allen took over for him, and I don't think he's very good. A couple hours after that, Geno Smith, the guy that was drafted by the Jets Cup, because he got, he got punched in the face because he didn't show up at a charity event that he said that he would show up at or like a camp or something. And then he goes to the Giants where he played like a game or two. And then I think he bounced around. Then he wound up in Seattle where he was a starter and a pro bowler. And he was awesome. Comeback player of the year. He signed with the Seattle Seahawks for a long-term deal. They draft fifth overall. I doubt this precludes them from suggesting that they'll take a quarterback, but I don't know that they're going to take a quarterback. Let's see. Gino. $52 million in the first calendar year. What's up? It's a three-year deal. I bet they could get out after two. I suspect that they'll draft a guy. What a year it's been. They got Drew Locke. They got Geno Smith. Everyone thought they were tanking. And then they, uh, it turns out the Broncos tanked for them. It was literally the same thing as the Lions. Have a guy that's just there. They play better than you think. Uh, but though Geno is significantly, significantly, significantly better than Derek Carr. Like, much better. Lions win the NFC North and Geno Smith is their quarterback. Said it meant it. So now the quarterback market has movement and we wait on Aaron Rodgers and whichever way the wind blows for him and Tom Brady to corrupt our lives. Starting to get the vibe. Daniel Jones is next recontract. He could be a free agent. Uh, he wants $45 million a year. Gino just got fitty, but part of that is has to do with like bonuses and, and whatnot, I think. Um, the Giants are like, hey, if Daniel Jones doesn't take less money, we can't have Saquon. And so Saquon, like, they had a productive meeting, but I'm sure Saquon's like, you're going to keep that fucking guy over me. I carry the whole goddamn team this year. So that's where we're watching. I am starting to get the impression that Matthew Stafford might be available for trade. So Jalen Ramsey's on the trade block. Bobby Wagner's not coming back. Letter Floyd isn't coming back. Allen Robinson is on the trade block, but he sucks. I mean, Whitworth retired beginning of last year. I think that the Rams are straight up breaking it down. And I, I'm sorry, you I I would say over under a week before that really starts happening. The what about Matthew Stafford to the Jets? Whew. Filthy. Filthy, 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 filthy. If that were to happen, that is naughty. How much fun would that be? 
Legal free agency tampering. Free agency. The the NFL league year, the new year for the NFL, is a week from Thursday. <laughs> Funny enough, like the day that March Madness starts. Oh, they're so good at this. <laughs> the NFL's so good at this. But legally, they can tamper. So you can say like, oh, they've agreed to a deal, then they can't sign the deal till Thursday. But they can they can publicly announce new deals for new teams on Tuesday, a week from today. Free agency has gotten rather boring. All of the good players are either kept and traded, tagged. Like, no, there's never anybody that's good available in free agency anymore, which makes sense because if you have a good player, why would you let him go? That would be dumb. Derrick Henry, Offensive Player of the Year from a couple of years ago. He is available on the trade market, allegedly. He's a 30-year-old. He gets hurt, runs a lot. Titans are straight up breaking it down as well. I, I, bet, him, I bet Malik Willis is available. Would you want to give up anything for him, though? That's the question. Russell Westbrook, who plays for the Clippers now, in a game last night, got two fans seated in the front row, 86 out of there, bro. Got him out. He said, yo. I don't know what they said to him. Here's the video. Look at him. Hey, yo, these two. They're saying some inappropriate shit to me. Get them out. This is in Sacramento, I think. You know, I haven't checked in a while. Let's check out the... Are the Clippers good? I, I doubt it just because I've not been paying attention, but, like, are they good? They're in the playoffs. What's up? They're one game over 500. How are the Mavs so good but so bad? I don't get it. Suns. Well, there they are. The Nugs. Holy shit. Crushing. They have 46 and 19. The 76ers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Sixers. They stopped the Bucks winning streak a couple games ago after losing the Celtics in the Heat. I don't know. Basketball's happening. Um, same thing. Hockey also happening. The NHL is rounding its corner after the all-star break, games are happening, things are, people are doing stuff, the teams that are good are good, the teams that are bad are bad. Had a cool story in college hockey, Arizona State, which is a men's ice hockey, Division One men's ice hockey team, which is awesome, and more Pac-12 would be great. They had an injury or a travel situation, I don't really remember which one, it doesn't matter, but what does matter is that they also have a high-level club team, and that high-level club team has a, their best player and Arizona State was like, dude, we need a fucking guy. And they called the dude from a club hockey team. They called the dude from the club hockey team to come up, and he played in his first Division One hockey game. How cool. Also, he scored. Arizona State beats Alaska Anchorage, which is a Division One program. They are six wins, 19 losses on the season. So Arizona State won five to nothing. This dude scored a goal. Unbelievable. What a day. What a vibe. Well, I actually don't know the guy's name. Let's pull him up on Twitter. Let's give him some clout. He has 296 followers. Ben Cross. Is that him? Regardless. Irregardless. I don't know if that's him. But I don't think it's Ben Cross. My bad. It's still a cool story. I love that story. Say, East Carolina baseball, uh, if you had to name yourself and, like, pick a fruit, like, what fruit best describes you? If you want to look at your screen, my guess would be a grape or, wow, these uniforms are bad. The purple is just not good. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, that guy's mustache is better than mine. Maybe. Oh, the soul patch, though. Nah, bro. That's uh, shit's weak. Get that out of there. Grape uniforms for East Carolina baseball. Uh, somebody greenlit this. It's one thing to bring back the 90s. It is quite another to bring back the 70s, um, which I'm down with, sort of, but not that down with. Calvin Ridley, the guy that got suspended from the National Football League for gambling on the sport, has been reinstated. What, can, what up, Calv? What up, Calvin? Yeah, uh, good for him. Remember, he's been traded. He's now on the Jacksonville Jaguars. World Baseball Classic happening right now, and the most classic baseball player in the world, Shohei Otani, buddy. The pepper grinder. A pepper grinder is when you hit a home run and you drop to your knee to finish the swing. Watch this shit. Come on. Oh, 
Hold on, we gotta play the game. Boom. Unbelievable. What a freak show. Best team sport athlete in the world. I'll die in that hell. Absolutely die in that hell. Like, rate, review, subscribe, back to better than ever for controversial ones. But John Moran probably is going to talk about it. <laughs>